We are live. Week two, week two. Stay in frame, Ben. Stay in frame. You know, that's how I've been telling myself. It's like, I feel like I'm going mental, but then I just keep saying, stay in frame, right? Luke? Even when you're not on the live stream, you just no, go no. like this. No, like when you're frame. just playing with your kids, stay Walking in frame. The street, applying soap, when I'm just laugh dancing around. Laugh dancing is a yeah, what, thing lately. Uh, I, <laughs> what is that? Yeah, I don't. Ben, what is what is with Luke and his little hat? What is he? Is that like, hello? Are we ten years old? What is up with that, man? Sorry, I'm not paying attention because well, we're not recording yet. I thought, you know? oh, we're not. Well, we are. We're live. Eight people are watching us, but we're not technically live. <laughs> Antonio. All right, we ready, boys? We've got ten people. I, it's time. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Luke. I really wanted to share this so other people could join too, and I, I can't find right, it. Fine, it's sure. always a problem. Eric, go ahead. We're no we're no we're, we're no hurry. We can do it. People we can are, do it. Look, we all got it, all the time working. in the world. Someone's like, wait, I was in the middle of scrubbing my boots, but I guess take your time. <laughs> you know, you know, right, Gabe? Come on, yeah. give me one of these. Where's Gabe? I want I want to see Gabe. Where is he? Let me see him. Look at that. Oh, this is not we are the world. All right, we better start this thing because this is getting... Oh, there. yeah, I see it now. Okay, right, go for it. All right, here we go. Yes. You are listening to the Lockdown Livestream, a special edition Provoke and Inspire episode. All right. Welcome to the Provoke and Inspire podcast. Why am I distracted, you ask? Because I'm trying to share this thing. As we go live, we are in week two of the lockdown live stream, the end of the world and such. Hello, boys. It seems like you're still alive, hey. nonetheless. Uh, ben, Rock I am rolling. Ready. Ben, what is going on with Luke and his tiny hat? I mean, what is up with that, man? It's, it's a regular size hat. You regular asked size. people to you no, not people. You said, Luke, make sure you wear your hat in a funny way. It was totally premeditated. <laughs> no, I did it. Authentic. I did yeah. not. <laughs> yes, and it, it looks, what's wrong no, with my it. what's wrong with my hat? I don't, well, it I looks, don't understand. It, it, look, it looks like the kind of hat that you wear when you're like five. Mm. You know, yeah. Billy. This is, but this I, is, no, this is how we wear it in, in the UK. Okay, that's enough. You see, that, was, right, that yeah. was at least in theory funny. All right, here we are. I'm uh, in the USA. I'm thoroughly sanitized. Uh, Luke is in Poland. David, it is is in New Zealand, and uh, here we're here again, bringing to you live this conversation about our current events and the crisis that is upon all of us. And uh, it's very serious. It's very alarming, and uh, I think we're each day trying to process what's going on and how God would have us react. Uh, what he would have us do. And and honestly, I do think there's an element of this daily live stream that's us just being able to be together. It sounds funny, but this is kind of what being together is now uh, exactly. in March 2020. Uh, and so we want this to be an opportunity for you to, to, to watch this, to leave a comment, to leave a question, and please do. Uh, we want this to be highly uh, user-generated. So please, on the on the comments, uh, let us know what you want us to discuss. Uh, if there are things that you want us to bring up, we do have some questions that I want to get to that have been asked earlier. Uh, otherwise, just be with us. You know, come within our covenant, wrap your arms around us, let us transfer digital warmth from one to another, yes. from one to another. Right, Gabe? Boom. All right. So, David, uh, looks like there's been a little update in your neck of the woods. So how about you tell us what's going on in New Zealand? Well, uh, uh, they've just issued a, a, a state of emergency here. It's like the highest level they've ever had in the history of the country. And we're going to go into a total lockdown starting on midnight Wednesday, uh, New Zealand time. And what it means is wow. that everyone is, has to be, they, they just basically are locked down. And uh, they're, it's not voluntary. They're actually going to have, police out and other and military to make sure that it happens. Oh wow. Yeah. So it's um so like you literally can't leave house? Like well, you, you go shopping for food or well they're gonna close everything except uh supermarkets and petrol stations. Uh but you can't you can't travel like 
um, only a, like people who are, are healthcare workers, that kind of thing are allowed to fly. Uh, they're closing yeah. everything down and they're saying it'll be a month or more. So, oh, wow. so people here are really, uh, they're like saying, Hey, now don't, no one needs to panic. You know, you don't need to like panic buy. Right. I mean, I was at the supermarket yesterday and I didn't know anything about this, you know? So I, and mm-hmm. I go there and it's like, what is going on? Because of people were just lined up. Yeah. Luke, I am telling the truth for once. <laughs> um, what is yeah all oh, right and well, it's luke, not me oh no, i thought i was getting no, called out no luke knows exactly what i'm talking about and so i, I go to something the, about the way i looked no i go to the supermarket and it's like crazy and then i'm like what is going on and then apparently the prime minister came on and and made this said that on wednesday night they're going to level four which is the i think it's the highest you can go here in terms of mm. emergency stuff and so people are a little, you know, oh, so I was going to say, everyone say, don't go to the supermarket. It's okay. And it's mm. no, you don't have to panic. And of course, what does everyone do? They go, right. to, they go they to the supermarket. Go to the <laughs> yeah. And I noticed that one of the things that was gone, you could hardly buy was chocolate. So like on the, the shelf where they sell all the <laughs> chocolate, it was pretty much like in the, in the supermarket I was in, it was almost cleared out. So apparently that's an important Toilet paper and chocolate are kind of the two of the most important things you need if, if it's the end of the world. So, yeah. Oh, and then I went, I went to a medical clinic here because we needed to get registered. And they have like, I'll take a picture of it and put it and post it on our community page. But it was like crazy. They had like these barricades. So you couldn't actually go in the clinic. And they had this table out on the kind of on the street with this, with this, uh, you know, this, this medical worker with a mask on and you had to do this hand sanitizer and then you had to fill out this form, but you weren't allowed to actually go into the, into the clinic. And so, um, yeah, it's, it's getting crazy. That's crazy. for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Did you and Jody manage to get everything you need for lockdown time? Yeah. I you think you got your hair products. We saw that last, last week, but I'm food really, wise, I mean, well, I do have, I do have good hair products so that that won't, you know, cause that's important. Obviously if you're going to, if it, you know, if you're, if it's a, the apocalypse, you don't want to look all haggard, do you? Hmm. So, um, <laughs> that's no, a, I mean, that part of the apocalypse look. Well, not if you're like Mad you're, Max, not if you're a stagger guy, we, we yeah. look good to the end. Hey, David, so, <laughs> exactly. what, what? I got what? a complaint that we basically went an entire week without David's random story, which no. yeah, what's up with that? I thought that would be a nice relief for everyone. Yeah, uh, but I, All right. I have to listen to the people, and the people All said, right. "Give us a random story." But okay, just in case Bruce is listening. Warning: yeah. David's random yeah. story may contain mild to moderate banter with little to no substance. If you are easily offended, please do not consume some or all of David's random story. David's random story contains little to no truth and may directly or indirectly lead to face bleeding, skin loss, tooth loss, nose growth, heightened senses, diminished appetite, limited to dairy and raw meat products. If you're overly sensitive, irritable, or prone to violent mood swings, these may increase while listening to David's random story. If itchiness develops while listening to David's random story, seek medical assistance immediately. If you or someone you love has experienced trauma as a result of listening to David's random story, well, in the words of Nigel. David's random story. Well, there you go. Look, our legal butt. So, so anyway, there's been a lot of rumors out there about Russian interference, mm-hmm. um, especially in the U.S. I mean, it's been it's been crazy, and this whole time I've been uh, hearing from Nigel, and he's been telling me that he's been in these meetings with Putin, uh, and he said it was had to do with. With Chad, and for those of you that don't remember, Chad used to be on this podcast. He's he's doing some other things right now, including getting us some amazing guests. But you know, Chad wrote a book, uh, Ten Thousand Risks and Other Adventures, and so he said, he told me, Nigel said that he was with Putin trying to promote Chad's book, Ten Thousand Risks, and uh, I didn't believe him. I'm like, oh yeah, right. So you're with you're with Putin for you know, and I'm like. Come on, Nigel, speak some some truth. But then I saw, and I don't know if you guys are realize this, but I saw that a picture of a lion roaming the streets of Moscow, and apparently right. Putin released five hundred lions 
uh, on the streets to to enforce the uh, shutdown policy or whatever they're having wow. in, 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 in I Moscow. I saw that. Did you see that? Yeah. And so I yeah, did. That's it crazy. Screen. I put it up on yeah. the screen. Can you see that? It's, That's yeah, awesome. It's, yeah. So I guess, you know, Luke, Luke Collins said, I'm speaking the truth. Well, apparently Nigel was speaking the truth. And, and yeah. I don't, yeah. And I guess the other thing that's happening is he's, he's wanting to incorporate drop and roll, uh, which right. I don't know how, how that's going to help, help us. Uh, but he wants to do this drop and roll thing that they, well, they actually, they actually teach it here in New Zealand. So like um, if there's a, an earthquake or something, you're supposed to drop and roll. Aren't you supposed and to? See, I thought that was a new music style. What? I thought it was like, I thought it was like a, a cool new music style. I think you're supposed no, to maybe no. we could stop. use that now. Stop what? drop and roll. You're forgetting the stop. stop. Right. Because what if you're on a bicycle? Uh, Good yeah. luck dropping and rolling while on a bicycle. Yeah. <laughs> that would be pretty amazing. Because yeah, it, actually roll. Ben got in big trouble when he was in, in high school because he started dropping and rolling just kind of randomly Without right stopping. during the during the lectures. And oh, uh wow. and so then so then we got this call. Practicing. We got a call from somebody, Luke, and Luke again. Interrupting. Looks Luke, like in this sorry. little like he's like a bird. He's like, <laughs> you're kidding. <laughs> like, just hey, I'm just trying to keep it interesting. Turn off his microphone. So, yeah. So I get a call from the headmaster, and he says, you know, I need to talk to you because Ben is dropping and rolling inappropriately during the school lessons, and uh, and so anyway, I had to talk to him about it. And it kind of brings all this stuff is coming back to me now that we're, uh, you know, now that Nigel is proposing the drop and roll initiative. All right. Yeah, hold on. Hold, on, hold no. on. Hold up. I, I was tired of the lies and I thought, that's it. Let's bring on another Kiwi. His name is Bernie. <laughs> and yes, I, need, nice. I need proof. <laughs> Bernie, back me up, Bernie. Bernie! No, hey! Where are everybody. you, Bernie? Where are you? All right. All right. I, Luke, Luke's I, back hey, look, on they were. Put mute. Uh, yeah, good. Luke's back on mute. All right. So, All right, David, mute. Bernie, I want to know yes. two things. One, yeah. you're looking a little clean shaven for my liking. That's freaking me out. I'm sorry. My, you can tell my child has got to the point where she can start grabbing things. So I decided to to, to take the deep jump. I will say that you're the you have a, a considerable more of a dimple chin or a bum chin than I than I realized. <laughs> I so I there prefer, is that. To, to, I prefer the Superman chin, as it's commonly referred to by some people. I let David be back. I could just see him. He's just so muzzled. All right, Luke and David. Oh, thank you, Ben. I like it, but it, it looks like you're transitioning. <laughs> oh, jeez. Hey. What? You know, I'm not... <laughs> All right, Bernie. The Bernie, I just want to thank you because they're always mocking me for my hat. And uh, <laughs> now you... You've given like them some, we're all something wearing extra. hats, like that episode of The Simpsons. Yeah. But Bernie, second thing, what yeah. is what Dave is saying about the lions in Russia true? You you have a Ukrainian wife, so that's similar. You know that might be yeah, offensive to some enough. people, but it's more or less that area. Yes. Same language. So can you verify that? And then I want to know about New Zealand, and then we'll have to let you go. So verifying the lions in the streets in in, in Russia is that what you're asking? Yes. So I, mm. I missed I missed the lead up. Uh, I, I think it's best to neither confirm or deny it to keep the mystery alive. Uh, I think that's, that would be the, the, the way that they want it. Uh, I'm not surprised if that's true, but I wouldn't be surprised if it's not true either. How now right. is that now, vague enough? For now, you? Trump, All Trump right, would about say it, Bernie. it's fake news. He's gone. Oh, he was going to say something about New Zealand. All right, fine. He can I guess David already second. told us. Bernie, you got 30 more oh, seconds. Next. Okay. <laughs> what do you want to know? He's gone. All right. <laughs> Uh, was that hey, your story over? Now Trump would call that fake news. That whole line. Oh, story, David still. David still. Can't here. believe. Sorry, can't guys. Believe this what this live says. stream is just falling apart. I, I'm going to let you go, Bernie. You're gone. He's gone. He's gone. David's random story. All right. So we're going to pull it together. We've had fun. We've laughed. We've cried. I've sweated furiously in places that I didn't even know existed. Uh, but now we're going to pull it back together. So. Uh, we've had a weekend to decompress, hopefully. And uh, what I think it's important to, you know, as this thing develops, as this thing unfolds, what is it that God is saying to you? Um, what is it that God's been putting on your heart? Um, because it's an evolving thing, right? No one saw this coming. No one knew that this was going to be a thing we had to deal with. 
Um, and I think even our Christian response is something that's been evolving over time. So uh, I don't know, David, what do you think? Has, has God been putting any new thoughts on your heart slash mind? Well, uh, I think we, it's so crazy because we, we are in, they're just saying it here in New Zealand, they're doing coming into this lockdown. They're saying you have to be two meters away from it, everybody. Um, you have to be in isolation for at least a month or longer. And so you can think, how in the world can I share the love of Jesus in an environment hmm. like this? It's so unusual. Uh, but the other day, because we were planning on leaving New Zealand on, on April 2nd to go to the U.S. and then go to Germany. Uh, but now that's not going to be possible. So. And, and so I called our ticket agent at United, um, which after being online for like, or waiting for like an hour and a half on the phone. And so, so I get this, you know, just this random ticket agent in, uh, on, the, on the phone. And she's, you know, I'm talking to her about changing my ticket and everything. And then I just said, so how are you doing? You know, which is kind of weird because it's just a business yeah. thing on the phone. Mm -hmm. I just said, so I said, are you okay? And she's like, hmm. well, you know, my, my son just lost his job. Oh, and, wow. uh, and I said, wow, I'm, that's pretty rough, you know? And, and, uh, so she was helping me some more and then, and then, uh, she came back to me with some information and I said, well, is it okay if I, if I pray for you and your son, because, you know, I'm sure that there's a, you guys are pretty shaken up about everything. And she goes, yeah. Mm. And this is all being recorded, you know, because they, wow. they say, right. And um, so I just prayed, you know, I just prayed for uh, Jesus to give uh, them peace, that he'd look after uh, their, her son. And she said, I feel like like I'm getting these these shivers going through my body. And and she said, wow. listen, I'm not going to you know, I'm not supposed to work tomorrow, but I'm going to call you back. I'm going to take care of your ticket, even though I'm not supposed to work. And then I'm going to call you back. Uh, the next tomorrow to make sure that your ticket is good and everything. And so I'm expecting a call from her later today. But then when she calls back, I'm just going to say, do you know Jesus? Have you given your life to him? Mm -hmm. So so that just to me was like one example of how we we can talk to people in this crazy time, you know, because it's not like the normal thing that you would think, you know, talking to a ticket agent from from a major airline about changing your ticket. Right. But people are so yeah. scared and so open. So that just, that was just a really kind of a cool example for me. Yeah. Luke, I know you, you know. Had a I was thinking. Testimony. Yeah, you know, I was thinking about how because um, the other day, David, you were saying how you were calling people, and the our, re our initial reaction has been, let's do everything online now. Let's find opportunities online, and I think that's good. But it it was kind of. I was getting tired of the whole online thing, even though, you know, we do this podcast and everything, but the feed just gets so busy and, and just tired of seeing stuff on social yeah, media all the great. time. And, and I was thinking about that, David, the other day that you, you were saying, you know, you've been calling people. And I think that we do have to find other ways beyond the online stuff, the social media stuff. Cause it's, it's still, even though it's all we, in some ways it's all we've got, it's still shallow in terms of relationships. And I was just thinking today, I was like, yeah, I need to be calling more people on the phone. Because I think it's different, and it was cool that testimony you just shared also emphasizes that. Yeah, level. no, it's it's uh, I've I have I've had the similar experiences, and I, it's it's funny how this has raised the empathy level up in my own heart, like where I it's so humanized people, and it sounds weird to say that, but you can you can kind of uh, dehumanize even the people in your own life in the sense that. You forget that they are real, that they have needs. They're not just people that you interact with in a practical way. Um, and so I found myself feeling more empathetic. You know, like what what's going on in your heart? You're I'm kind of stressed and a lot's going on in my life. I'm, I'm sure you feel the same way. And so I've just been asking people, you know, I'll, I'll be in the middle of some practical call with some guy I work with or whatever. And I've just been saying, by the way, how are you feeling? How are you doing? And I don't know about you guys, but I found myself doing that way more, haven't you? I mean, you, you, it's it's almost impossible for me to have a conversation with someone without at some point saying, are you doing okay? Like, can I pray for yeah. you? It's, how is your family, right? Have you guys felt that the empathy in your own heart for other people has just gone way up because of just how fragile everything and everyone is right now? Yeah, it's true. I mean, I, sorry, Luke, I, did you want to say 
Was that all right? No, go all ahead. Right. So yeah, I mean, I, when I was at the supermarket yesterday and it was just this panic, I didn't even know what was going on because I didn't realize that there was a, this, this lockdown coming. Um, and there's this lady, she's just all panicky because you couldn't buy, you know, there's no shopping carts. And so, so I just gave her mine and I said, don't worry, you know, you can have mine. I'll just go, go find another one. And, you know, I, it's just like, you feel this kind of, like you said, Ben, what people are going through. And it's not that I'm immune to it. Okay. So I don't want to give the idea that I'm, that I don't have anxiety and that I'm not anxious, but it. But I, again, like we've been saying over and over again, it's uh, we know God. We have this relationship with Jesus, and He gives us this this foundation in the midst of a time like this. And and I just see so many people so worried. And like you said, Ben, I'm I, I'm doing the same thing. I'm just where I do interact with people from a distance, or you know, I'm saying, "Are you okay?" You know, and I think I guess the challenge I would give to myself and all of us who are listening to this is. Don't just say to them, are you okay? But but say, how do you need to prayer? And then after you pray, say, do you, have, do you know Jesus? Yeah. Do you know understand that? So I think it's cool and it's good to tell people you know, or to ask people, are you okay? And look at ways to help them practically. But let's let's take this opportunity to tell people about Jesus because, man, we need to know who he is, right? Yeah. No, absolutely. Yeah, Luke, you mentioned that you had a, a pretty cool testimony that you wanted to share. Yeah, yeah, it's one. It's not not something that happened to me, but it's something I read. Somebody shared with me today, and uh, it's from a doctor from the Lombardy um, region in Italy, where where it's you know they they have the worst uh, hit of the virus. Um, and so he posted it a few days ago, and uh, yeah, twenty twenty first of March. And he, I'll just read a few pieces from it. He says, up until two weeks ago, my colleagues and I were atheists. This was normal because we are doctors and we have learned that science proves that God does not exist. I always laughed at my parents when they went to church. And then he starts telling a story about a 75-year-old pastor that uh, went into the hospital to get treated. And his witness really like marked the doctors and the staff. He would go around praying for people. Um, that were sick. Uh, he would hold hands with those that were dying. He'd read passages from the Bible to them. And he said that this really um, struck him and he started uh, talking more with the doctor. And then a bit, a bit later on, he says this, quoting, uh, we realize that we have reached the limits of what man can do and that we need God. And we've begun to ask for his help. When we have a few moments free, we speak among ourselves and we cannot believe that we who were fierce atheists um, and now seeking for interior peace by asking the Lord to help us to resist so that wow. we can take care of the sick. And uh, so he goes on to say, and then he says, yesterday the pastor passed away. You know, he died. Uh, but but that left him with, with a new faith. And uh, just amazing just what this doctor's sharing, you know, what he's been through and how it made him, you know, turn to faith and realize that God is there and that that's what he needs. So I just thought that was so powerful, that story. Yeah. Yeah. And, and Southern Europe is like, yeah, there's so few believers there and in Italy. It's true. It's, it's unbelievable. So, yeah, yeah. that's yeah. that's really it's actually unique that it was a pastor that, you know, he calls him a pastor. I guess that means he was an evangelical Christian, which is even more rare, even more rare. in Italy. Yeah. It's just, yeah, just unusual. It's amazing. Yeah. Well, I don't think it, it really doesn't matter who you are or what you believe. I don't think anyone is in the same place they were a month ago or two months ago uh, in terms of their just consciousness, in terms of their awareness of reality. And uh, mm. the, the the things that matter have kind of come to the surface and the things that don't matter have really faded away. And I, I think the same thing we said a lot last week is that, um, you know, we, we need to really be uh, intentional with this time uh, something that I want to talk about today is is the the importance of establishing a routine. Um, this might sound like a very practical conversation, but I think practical is what we need right now because I yeah. think the tendency uh, is to kind of just freeze and feel a little bit immobile and to not know what to do. Um, and and the problem with that is that I feel like 
to do that is to be like a, a an undefended fort. Your mind and your life is just going to be invaded by whatever you happen to be around. And I think more than ever, we are in need of of real intentional living and discipline. Um, and so maybe David, and, and, and you know, I can share my thoughts too. Kind of tell, give your thoughts on why routine is so important right now. Why it's important to not just sort of succumb to the lethargy and the immobility and the paralysis of our time and just say, I don't know what to do. And I don't have any routine left. And everything has just gone crazy. We've had, depending on where you are in the world, we've had a little bit of time to absorb the shock of that. Um, and things, of course, continue to evolve. Um, but talk about routine and why it's so critically, uh, spiritually, practically, emotionally, and in every way. Well, I think part of reason, one of the reasons is important is that you're taking control of your thoughts and your mind. And uh, you're, it's, it's also emotionally very good for you to, to put routine in, around yourself. Now, for some people, that's harder than others. Some people are just by nature able to set up their own personal disciplines and routine. Uh, but, you know, it, it's really important to do. So one of the things you should do is set the alarm. You know, set the alarm. If you even if you're if you're yeah. in lockdown and there's you don't have any work you can go to, and uh, don't don't just sleep. You know, just don't you know set the alarm. Set the alarm for uh, early. You know, maybe I don't know what's early for for you, but well, I mean I was up at four thirty this morning, but that's probably too early. But uh, you know, set your alarm for like uh, six thirty, seven o'clock in the morning. And if you can take a shower, if you're able to have a shower, take a shower and, and get dressed, you know, and like you're going to be going somewhere. So get up, set an alarm, get up, take a shower, and then start your day focusing on Jesus. You know, don't start your day just going online and looking at the latest news cycle, but start your day uh, focusing on Jesus. Um, Listen to the daily audio Bible, if that you know, with Brian around the great global campfire, or <laughs> you know, whatever it is that that will get you focused on that. And I think that's really an important thing to to start your day with that kind of routine, and then oh, listen. Sense. Yes, and of course, the first thing you do. You're right, Naomi. The first thing you do is, uh, yeah, the donkey wakes Ton Antonius at six, but that's another point. Um, and that's true. It's not that making is, that up at all. No, he's not. And I know that's the weird thing. Uh, yeah. You, well, what I do is I, I, I set the alarm and I usually wake up before the alarm goes off anyway. And so that I stumble, you know, to the coffee jug and I turn that on and uh, I get my coffee. coffee. Sounds like an awesome cafe, by the way. Yeah. And then I, and then I, <laughs> and then I listen to the daily audio Bible and but but I think you need to start with that and then you and then you need to have a uh, what is it I'm supposed to do today? You know, put a list together of practical things that you're going to do, uh, because I think uh, routine is going to help you, especially when if you are in a lockdown like many of us are and going to be for a while. Yeah. Contributing awesome. thoughts, Luke. Oh, yeah, I, I have to do that. Otherwise, my wife gets really angry with me. You know, if I don't get up and shower, she's yeah. like, she gets so mad at me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, but it's true. All right. It is I true. Think you I... turn... Go ahead. Luke. What? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> no, I'm di... no, but it is true. I do agree. I think also getting out, um, if you can. Uh, I know in some places they're not, not allowing that. But um, but as much, if you I mean, like in the UK, it's interesting. They've they've put down the whole lockdown thing. But the, the prime minister government's really tried to keep the option open for people to go to parks or to go go runs and things like that. And I think that's really healthy as well. When you're getting locked up in your house all day, being able to go for a walk to pray or do some exercise, you know, is really important, too. But having rhythms morning and evening as well. Like so you kind of. Um, have something to keep refreshing your mind. I find I, you know, I've often uh, my time of prayer is usually mornings, but I found that going back to prayer in in the evenings or, or reading the Word, having a time of prayer with my wife, really helps to keep focused as well. I think that's really important. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, we Jody and I have different rhythms. I mean, 
uh, where I pray in my own, and then we'll pray together. And then we have our like prayer calls with our different people around the world in the world, you know, the 24 prayer thing we've got going. So uh, I have just kind of different t- kinds of prayer happening the whole day. And I, I think that's really critical. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, and also um, make a list, you know, of and this is maybe a little off topic, but I think it's important too to just kind of start your day thanking God. Um, you know, think of things. Yeah. You know, yeah. Perspective. So yeah. Thank him. You know, thank him for his, for that cup of coffee. If you're able to have a cup of coffee, like, man, thank you, Jesus, that, that I can have this cup of coffee. Thank you that I, that I have a bed that I can sleep in. Uh, think about his, his kindness, you know, like all the times where I've, where I've fallen down and I've let him down and he's picked me up again. You know, thank him for, you know, for me, I'll thank, thank him for, for Jody and for my, my sons and their wives and my grandkids. And, and I'll start going around in, in my context. I'll start just naming all the people I know around the world, all the people that I love, you know, and I think it's really, it's really important when you're in a time like this to, to remind yourself of God's goodness and his, and how he's, he's there and he cares. And, and, and it's good to say it, you know, um, not to just think it, but to say it and to speak it out. And, and if you're in, and, and you can start by saying, God, help me to be grateful and then ask him to show you things that you should be grateful for. And, and as you, it, for me, when I start praying that way, then things will come to mind and, and it's uh it can be a, a really important exercise to start with. Yeah. Here's an interesting question uh, from Christina. What are some good disciplines to practice during the lockdown when you can't leave your house like right now in Spain? Um, and again, mm-hmm. that bling, that brings the global perspective that we're not all in the same position. Some people certainly have it worse than others. Other people are, mm-hmm. you know, in its small apartments where they're, they don't have the luxury of leaving. Other people have kids. And so it's not as easy as establishing a routine depending on their needs and, and the structure that's been stripped away from parents. Um, so it, it's difficult. Um, I think that, uh, the thing that, the thing that really has struck me is that this is really exposes what sustains my peace, right? The Holy spirit, uh, produces many fruits in our lives and, and two of them are joy and peace. Um, and it doesn't say that circumstances bring joy and peace. It's not, Join peace is not the the product of exercise or productivity or entertainment. There is a there is a beautiful, rich, deep joy and peace that is the product of the Holy Spirit's presence in your life. And so, mm. I think probably an important thing to do is ask for the Holy Spirit, right? Mm, and, yeah. and which comes mm. back to prayer. And you know, you read. I'm reading a book on leadership right now uh, that talks about the need to have solitude and how. Um, solitude is such a key to being able to weather the storms as a leader, right? If, and, and almost directly connected to the greatest leaders of history are those that, that went away to restore that inside, uh, that, that res- inner resilience. That's where the calm came and the ability to, um, to be able to handle the, the, the pressures and the problems of the world around them. And, and so what I would say is that this is a, a, a beautiful opportunity to really develop that inner spiritual strength, that Holy Spirit infilling. And it, and it is difficult, Christina, don't get me wrong. I couldn't imagine what it would be like to be stuck inside. And, and that may happen to us. Um, I would stay still exercise, right? There, mm. there are a lot of good exercises you can do without having well, to be outside. Well, Ben, it's like that, Christina, it's like that guy in, that I read about in France who did a marathon on his balcony. Yeah. Did you see I that? that too. Yeah, yeah. 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 So he's, uh, you know, and he's just in a, in a, I'm sure it was not a big, just a small apartment in, in Paris or something. And, uh, he, he just did a marathon on his balcony. And so, yeah, yeah sorry, go ahead. No, ben. no, I, you know, in this book happens to talk about a lot of very inspiring leaders. Um, you know, like Nelson Mandela, uh, there was the, I don't even want to say the name cause I'm going to butcher it, but this sort of this, this woman that was like a hero of Burma. She like was this, the daughter of a, one of their, key founders and she fought a lot of battles was six spent 16 of 21 years as an adult in under house arrest 
where she was literally not even allowed to leave her house. And I thought this was very, it was an interesting read to read about a, a woman, a political prisoner who was stuck inside basically because she was trying to fight for democracy in this dict dictatorial environment of Burma. Um, you know, now she really talked about Buddhism as her strength. But what was very interesting about it is in these stories, there's this consistent thread that all of the exterior luxuries were stripped away and they had to really find this inner resilience to, to cope, right? And, and yet they, they often came out stronger as a result of it. Uh, and so for me, I think that this, is a, this isn't a, a unique opportunity. See it as an opportunity and embrace it. In the words of Justin Ballantyne, you know, you gotta, you gotta <laughs> get those hands and you gotta be like, embrace it, want more of it. You know, but I think in all honesty, you gotta say, all right. Nobody knows it, who that is though. <laughs> it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. Um, embrace <coughs> it, right? I think that is part of this is you can fight this and you can be bummed by it and you can be annoyed or you can say, all right, God, I'm in this position. I'm gonna break open the boxes. I'm gonna find out what it means to have deep resilience and f be filled with the Holy Spirit and be filled with your presence and, and the joy and the peace that comes with that. Uh, and then I'm going to go for it. You know, and, and I think what, what we've talked about a lot in previous podcasts is not saying who you are and who you're not. It's like, all right, I'm my son's teacher right now. <laughs> you know, my wife's helping too, but like we've got this workbook mm. and I'm like, all right. I'm So we, we worked through this little workbook for 30 minutes yesterday and today and I'm I'm teaching them how to spell and, you know, it's like, whatever. It's like, okay, this is, this is kind of, I'm going to go with this. This is life right now. And I'm going to say, God, I want to make the most of this. Um, and, and I think that. Did we you guys get out of your house, Ben? Yeah. Did you get to go somewhere else? Yeah. Fortunately, fortunately, uh, we were able to, which is great. But um, anyway, cool. so those are kind of my thoughts. I certainly. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. And Christina, you should talk to, to Jody. She has a good workout thing she does. And she always makes me do it with her. Insanity. So you can, I, I had, uh, no, it's not, I, no, it's not insanity. It's some Japanese girl now. Oh, that she, I had Sean T <laughs> just kicking my butt today. At yeah, that's right. He was, but just, Chris, I was sweating. Ask Jody, Christina, she'll be able to help you with that. But another thing uh, is meditate on a scripture every day. You know, like, like the scripture I've been thinking about is uh, Matthew eleven twenty-eight, 28, where Jesus said, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me for I'm gentle and humble in heart and you will find rest for your souls. And so it's so I want to meditate on, on what Jesus is saying there and then take it seriously and come to him. And I think it would be good uh, to to like really think, uh, read the book of John, uh, but to read it really in a contemplative way and, and, and let it breathe over you. You know, so like really focus on the book of John today. And, and ask God to speak to you through it. And the Psalms, I think uh, there's things God wants to say to me because of the lockdown that I've been too busy to hear. Yeah, You know, it's what I mean. It's like, I'm, I think he wants to speak new truths, Christina, to, to all of us that we've not heard before. And, and he's kind of, we're in this forced situation to do it. It's like our friend, Wild Willie Wilson, who uh, when he'd get thrown in jail, in prison in Turkey, and he said he liked it because it gave him a chance to read. Yeah. And I also, yeah, I think, no. it was, yeah. Well, and I really? also think he, he liked it because he didn't have to. No, I won't say that. But <laughs> <laughs> I knew where you were going with that. <laughs> I know, but I, I, I self censored. Um, a little bit. So, so, this is a time when God can speak to us in deeper ways if we are intentional. If we, you know, you can easily just kind of. Uh, miss this time. And like you were saying, Ben and Luke, I don't want to miss it. No, no. Yeah. Two, two additional thoughts I had as you were talking. Uh, Jackie writes that, you know, we should make a list of people who are alone, who might be struggling and proactively call them. That's an awesome comment. Great thing to do. Hmm. Um, I think part of this is don't think about yourself so much. I know that sounds, I didn't mean that at you, Christina, but I'm saying this to myself. Part of what the enemy would want you to do is just Think about yourself and your situation and your struggles mm -hmm. and blah, blah, blah. And it's this vicious cycle. I think part of this is pray and be grateful. Reflect on the good things you have. Take care of your body. You know, make a schedule, all that. But then get outside of yourself and, and say, who can I, who do I need to, need to reach out to? Who can I pray for? Who can I bless? Because I think a huge recipe um, for 
you know, not having all this self-pity is, is to take your eyes consciously off yourself, right? So there's a degree mm -hmm. of that. Um, the other thing I would say is my tendency is to, uh, I want to be very productive all the time, right? I'm, I'm, I think that's just how I'm wired. I think we got to be careful to not just fill this with other mm. stuff. You know, it's like, do this and take this online course and do this. And and you can, I think that the opposite response can be instead of kind of taking that productive rest and reflecting on God and serving other people in simple ways. And we could, we could replace that with just busy work. It's like, I'm going to learn to play right. piano now and I'm going to cook and I'm going to do one of these million social media challenges. And, you know, I would mm. say resist the urge to just get sucked into busyness, ironically, you right. know, to have all of your, your routine stripped away. And now you're busy doing other stuff. That's not really that relevant or important. Yeah. I was going to say something about that as well. Actually, you know, Ed Stetzer did an article early on when, um, you know, Christianity today, when, uh, when the, this, the whole lockdown thing first started coming into place. And he said something like that, Ben, he was saying, don't rush into trying to fill your schedule with something now to feel better and and that's an off for a lot of people that's a natural reaction it's like oh i've got to stay at home i gotta i've got to be productive and i gotta fill my schedule with something he was making a point that this is a great opportunity to do something we very rarely get to do which is to stop to take a step back and go okay to process you know what's going on right now to think about how have i been using my my time my life up till now and what can I learn? What What is God speaking to me about in this particular situation? And I think this is a key moment, actually. And I, I do believe God is using this to speak to a lot of us. You know, one thing that's been interesting happening with Anya and I is we've had a lot of people calling, well, Anya especially, having people from Poland calling and saying, hey, I really want to get involved with what you guys do. And that's it's you know in other seasons that's been really hard to find people that are motivated and want to serve in the mission and want to get involved and suddenly it's like now there's a ton of people calling and saying how can i help what can i do and i feel like it's because people are stop, stopping and realizing um you know i, I don't want to judge people but it, i think for some it's like have i really been using my life for something meaningful have what, my life up till now what has it been about and this this forced break in our lives um, is a good opportunity to stop and think. And and that's really cool. And also Ellen Crowley. Hello. That's so good to have you on the live stream. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I, I think, and I think I've been saying that consistently throughout <laughs> this, these live streams that we've been doing is that I, I just don't want to waste this. You know, I, I want to be someone that, um, whose character is refined in this trial. Um, I want to be someone who, whose actions are, are found to reflect Jesus in, in times of desperation. I mean, there, of course, I think all of us on some levels deal, deal with a fear in the back of our minds, like how bad is this going to get, right? How far is this going to go? Um, mm. And I quickly move away from those fears and those thoughts, but no matter what happens, I want to be someone, like I've said a few times, I want to be someone helping people onto the life raft, not pushing people out of the way to get on it. I, I don't, want to be someone whose character failed them in, in the, the biggest trial. Um, I want to be someone who, who, whose deep uh, faith in Jesus was made evident in these difficult times. Um, and, and so that's been my prayer is, is as we navigate this uh, to continue to ask Jesus to, to ground us deeply in him uh, and, and to help us give us the grace and the strength and, and Holy Spirit's power to do whatever we need to do. Uh, to, to represent him well uh, as things continue to get seemingly worse. Um, minimally, the economic fallout of this is real and, and the damage has already been done. And, uh, you know, I think that this is an opportunity for us to, to really rise up as followers of Jesus. And I know you guys have felt this too. Let this be the mm -hmm. cause of a major revival, right? Mm -hmm. let, let this be the thing that brings millions of people into a saving faith with Jesus because they recognize right. as that doctor friend, or doctor uh, testimony you mentioned, uh, realized that that what I thought was so solid is not so solid after all. And the, the faith of this fragile 75 year old uh, proved an incredible testimony, like it says in First Peter 3.15, where where does that hope come from at, a, at, at such a hopeless time like this? 
Uh, and that's mm. really what I ultimately want is, is for that hope to emanate from me. Yeah. Yeah, totally. David. Yeah. And I, and I also, I also think that, that uh, Jesus wants to give me his joy. He doesn't want me just to be in survival mode. Right. Uh, you know, the joy of the Lord is my strength. And he want in if I, you know, you're we were talking earlier about asking for more of the Holy Spirit. And I think that if we do that and say, Jesus, I need more of your spirit. I want to see who you are. I, I let me understand who you are in a deeper way, not just in, in my, you know, my in an academic way. Let me understand what it means to be your son, to be your daughter. I need to understand this more. I can't just be theoretical. My faith can't be theoretical. And um, God hears prayers like that. You know, it's, I, it makes me think of Psalm 116, one through two, where uh, uh, David says, I love the Lord for he heard my voice. He heard my cry for mercy because he turned his ear to me. I will call on him as long as I live. You know, and, and you've talked about this before, Ben, where, where God actually inclined, he actually leans in, you know, when we cry out to him, he leans in and, and, this is the this is the creator and he understands, you know, if you're stuck in your apartment in Madrid and it's like pretty rough. And um yeah. you know, or you know, Ellen, I don't know what your situation there is in Holland, but we need to we need to have a new understanding of who we are and who God is. And he leans in, he's 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 there, and, and so I think he wants to give us not just survival. He doesn't want us. He doesn't want us to just be able to survive. But he wants us to have the, his joy, you know, in this situation, you know, yeah. because we understand that so much. Yeah, absolutely. Um, David, your quality is terrible, so I thought I would bring on Kippy. Um, <laughs> just let you. Know. Hey, Kippy! Kippy, Kippy oh can no! You a, can you give us a little report card on the quality, please? Well. Um, David's audio sounds like it's definitely coming through his computer mic, which is way louder than Ben. And ben. Really? I jumped on. <laughs> well, so so why would that be? Well, let's because Kippy's not that uh, good. We're, we're, not here, to we're, we're not here to fix problems. We're here to just oh, we want to okay. receive grades. Sorry. So what right, grade does hey, David? Hey, Kippy, get? congratulations for getting married. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I was gonna say, what is that black thing on your finger? Oh yeah, that's a hey, it's a silicone ring, Ben, like yours. Boom, boom. Hey, hey, hey. All <laughs> I can say is, if you're gonna get stuck in lockdown, at least get married quick, <laughs> right? In the words of Nigel, yep. oh come on, Luke, that's so 1998. All right, so David gets a D. What does Luke get for an audio grade? Eyes audio actually sounds yeah, mine's great. pretty good. Thank okay. you. Give, thank you. Just want to say thank I, you. I would say Luke and Ben, you guys are at high quality audio. Sounds good. But it's okay. just quieter because Ben's Ben uh, David's audio is coming through his computer. So he's louder. You can hear him more clearly, but uh, your guys' audio definitely sounds cleaner. Kippy, what, what is it? Tell us where you are Kippy, and what things are like what are you where doing? you are. <laughs> I got both Luke and Ben talking to me at the same time, but I think I understood the question. Uh, I'm in Colombia and Bogota right now, and uh, we're in full lockdown here until April 13th. So no one can leave the house unless to go grocery shopping or to get some medicine or to walk your dog for a limit of 20 minutes. <laughs> but besides that, uh, everyone has to be stuck in their houses or apartments or wherever they live yeah. until April 13th. Um, yeah, it's pretty crazy. I mean, they're, they're doing some things to help out with, uh, at least here in Bogota with people. Cause a lot of people here live, um, you know, day by day, basically what they make from what they sell at their shops. So thankfully the government here is helping out with actually not having any water or electricity or any of those bills that's all covered right now. Uh, but it's still pretty crazy. Um, and yeah, it's an intense situation. Uh, the, also on Saturday, uh, there was a, a like <laughs> all across the country, several prisons, uh, prisoners tried to escape mm -hmm. and uh, 20, 23 yeah, prisoners, that. 23 prisoners were killed. There's several in the hospital and a few guards mm -hmm. as well in the hospital. So Jeez, it's, that's rough. <laughs> yeah. it's crazy. 
Well, but. on behalf of me, David, and Luke, uh, for those that don't know, Kippy does tons and tons of work for this podcast. Uh, yeah. All of those audio podcasts uh, that we had, Kippy is the reason we have those. So, Kippy, thank you. We're glad that you, you, well, we're not glad that you're stuck, but we're glad that you're at least married. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, hey, like uh, you said, right, it's, it's better be stuck and married. married. <laughs> yep, that's true. So, Kippy, right. we salute you. All right. Thanks. thanks, guys. Thanks for joining us. Peace. Uh, anyway, there you have it. Um, man, I know I heard that 23 people in Samoa es- escaped from a prison. You imagine in, in the mm. island of Samoa. Yikes. Uh, so it's it's crazy and it's everyone. And I think that's what makes makes this so bizarre is this is a global thing. I mean, there is no country. Mm. There's no one that's unaffected. I mean, just today, the governor of Minnesota has to go in quarantine because he was in contact with someone that had the virus and celebrities are getting it and leaders are getting it. And it's just, man, has there been any greater leveler of human division? I mean, I know people are not suffering equally. That's not what I'm saying. The rich are certainly benefiting from access to testing and all that stuff. But man, just from a vulnerability perspective, this virus nor knows nor cares and uh, we're all uh, getting a great deal of uh, humility given to us as a result of this. So uh, anyway, we will be doing podcasts every day this week, just like last week. We got some great guests. We have Maddie Montgomery. Uh, who else do we have, Luke? Who am I forgetting? I think we're, I'm forgetting Ooh, someone. Well, we're inviting a few. We just got to line up the times. So we might be having Luca Martini from Brazil, YouTuber. Yep. And yep. one of my mates from Hong Kong will come on. And oh, A.R. Bernard. It's not how A.R. Bernard. Are- going on from that when when wait you didn't know that that's tomorrow luke <laughs> oh you didn't tell me <laughs> that's awesome air Ar- bernard's amazing yeah air so so, to, to various so, presidents of the of america so luke who is he can you explain to our <laughs> listeners <laughs> i keep muting luke. oh i should have prepped for that no i don't want to do a bad job of, of, of presenting ar bernard i mean he pastors one of the largest churches in new york city um and uh, like i was saying he sat on uh what's it called the board of the council for various presidents and um, amazing yeah, yeah very amazing influential pastor in in the u.s and really yeah. looking forward to hearing from him so we have him on tomorrow we have maddie montgomery we have the ladies back they're gonna be on i haven't told you luke you got to tell anya this week i suppose i could contact her directly she does communicate directly but we're gonna have the ladies back probably thursday uh so it's gonna be a great week Uh, Remember, you can listen to all of these uh, on iTunes, wherever you listen to podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify. The episodes will be there if you missed it or missed part of it. So please (laughs) go back and uh, go check that out. Uh, iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, et cetera. Please consider checking that out. Uh, Hope beyond fear. Hope beyond fear. I was going to say that. I was going to say that. Uh, Continue to support us in this Hope Beyond Fear campaign. Uh, It's an amazing opportunity for you to share an encouraging message. Uh, into, uh, yeah, what we've been doing is writing signs on cardboard. We've been posting those online with the hashtag Hope Beyond Fear. Um, and we have, we've had lots and lots of people doing that throughout our mission. Uh, it don't, you don't have to be in our mission to be a part of that. So please uh, make your own sign, post that. We have the video uh, that you can share as well. Uh, I had to kick Luke off the live stream because his, his Wi-Fi was failing. And, you know, just for personal reasons. Uh, but otherwise, again, Check out the previous week's podcast. We had some great conversations. We're going to have great conversations every single day this week, 2 p.m. Central Time. That is all. David, you got any parting thoughts for us before I hit end live stream? See you guys tomorrow. Love you all. Love you all. Uh, That is all. And we'll talk to you next time. Peace.